Hello everyone. In this lecture video, we will discuss uh, our first iterative method. And this is called bisection method. So, let's go now to the topic. So, as you can see here in the slide, we have this one here. Okay, so the, the theorem that we did in order to use the bisection method is the intermediate value theorem or the IBT. In, uh, as you can see in the first video in uh, part 1, uh, we discuss uh, the IBT and it says that if you are given a function f which is uh, continuous on the closed interval a b that satisf satisfies this uh, inequality the function value of the left endpoint uh, times the function value at the right endpoint is uh, less than zero meaning to say uh, if this is positive and this is negative or if this is negative f of a is negative and this is positive then we can we are pretty sure that there exists a uh, a point p in the closed interval a b such that uh, f of p is equal to zero meaning there is a root a function that uh, that uh, is defined continuous continuously defined on this interval a b we can find a piece as that uh, f of p is equal to zero so this is the idea behind the the bisection method so what we'll do here is at each iteration we divide the interval a b into two sub intervals and evaluate f at that midpoint and discard the subinterval that does not contain the root and continue with other interval. So, for example, if you have, uh, let's say, let's go to the to our uh, open board. Uh, I'm going to open a, a document something. I don't know if uh, where are you? Maybe this. Uh, I think this is the one. Where are you? Let's open this one first. Uh, maybe this one, not this one. Let's try to open up one more. Uh, let's see, where are you? I think this one here. I think this one okay this one here let's uh, make this one uh, clear uh, let's zoom this one first okay that one it says here that if you uh, recall the definition it says here that at each interval, at each iteration, first iteration, you have to divide the interval AB into two sub-intervals and evaluate F at the midpoint. So, meaning to say, uh, you are going to, if this is the interval, for example, this is the, let's say, this one here. This is the, uh, the 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 root, okay. This is the root, okay, of the function f of x, and it says here that f of a uh, f of a is less than zero, and our f of b is greater than zero, as you can see here. Okay, this is our y axis this is our x axis and as you can see here this is positive right this is negative maybe this is zero okay so our f of uh, f of b 
is positive and the product or an RF of A is negative. The product of these two numbers is less than zero as what is being described in uh, in IBT. This one here. Okay? This one. So it says there exists P in the closed interval. So there exists P. This one here, this is our P. Okay? This is our P. This one. Okay? So the we are sure by the IBT if the IBT satisfies then uh, you can surely uh, find a point P such that f of uh, f of what they call this one f of P is equal to zero. Okay, so it says here in this illustration that if uh, you divide, okay, so the midpoint is I think this one here okay this is the midpoint okay this is the midpoint so P is equal to A plus B over 2 okay and then after this this is now your uh, you have two intervals now so AB AB the original uh, interval is divided into two uh, intervals okay we have AP and uh, PB okay so based on this uh, illustration uh, the one that contains the 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 point okay is this one okay uh, AP okay so we will choose uh, AP if uh, the point P is uh, in the interval PB then we will choose PB okay then we will do uh, the same uh, this is now our new okay this is now our uh, new in the algorithm in the uh, bisection algorithm Okay. We will now uh, we will now what do you call this one denote the interval AP as the new AB. Okay, and then we will divide again. Okay, we will this is our new B. Okay, and we will divide it again. Um, the interval. Okay. So we have uh, uh, this is a plus b divided by two, and our new our uh, I guess our uh, middle uh, our what they call this one midpoint is exactly uh, this one here p. Okay, we have two iterations only, and this is very clear that our p is uh, our midpoint is p. So this is our root after two iteration. Uh, only two iterations we got the the root okay so this is uh, how the the bisection uh, works okay so that's the that's the 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 method no the algorithm for the bisection method okay so but if after 10 iteration after two iterations then you can have uh, approximately uh, get the, the the solution then all you have to do is to continue uh, more okay continue dividing the interval where there is a root okay so let's have this example let's illustrate our method in this example 27 compute the first three iterations by hand for the function plotted in figure 1. So this is our figure. So this is the graph of y is equal to x to the 5 plus 2x cubed minus 5x minus 2. So let's try to get this uh, this this root here. This one here 1.32. There are three roots. 1, 2, 3. And uh, let's first uh, 
get the root here so in this illustration uh, it depends on how you choose the, the interval okay since we are we, we want to get this interval first so the i think the approx the appropriate interval is uh, 0 2 or you can have 1 2 but let's say let's get uh, 0 2 first okay so 0 2 uh, and then compute f of a and f of b and we know that uh, if you look at the the graph so we know that f of a is uh, negative 2 and f of b which is 2 is positive somewhere here so meaning to say the product of uh, f of a and f of b is less than 0 so there's a root again okay? there's a root so just like before uh, we will continue to divide the 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 interval a b that we choose which is 0 2 to the first interval that uh, we divide is a sub 1 b sub 1 and so on and so forth so and then after that uh, we divide we get the midpoint okay 0 plus 2 so 0 plus 2 is 2 divided by 2 is 1 and you see to obtain two intervals 0 1 and 1 2 so only one of them contains the root which is uh, 1 2 okay that's very clear in the in the graph Okay, so let's uh, let's try to open it uh, another. Uh, let's add mo one more image. Let's go to I think somewhere here. This one. I think that one. Okay, so this is the the graph. Uh, in figure one and it says that our uh, this is our a okay our a is equal to zero and our b is equal to two so get the midpoint we know that our f of zero is equal to that's uh, that's uh, negative okay and f of 2 is uh, positive so the product of this implies that the product of f of 0 and f of 2 is less than 0 so there's a root based on IBT okay so get the midpoint so p is equal to 0 plus 2 over 2 is equal to 1 and we know that this, the 1 is somewhere here so we have this interval this interval here okay so meaning to say uh, 0 2 is divided into two intervals we have 0 1 and 1 2 okay and we know that uh, 1 2 is the right one that uh, we know that there is a root in 1 2 okay so as you can see here okay so and then continue we can continue to to this uh, one here so this is our new AB okay this is our new AB interval AB so what will we what we will do is uh, divide again so P is equal to 1 plus 2 divided by 2 so we have 3 over 2 A or this is 1.5 so our interval is 1 to 1.5 or uh, 1.5 to 2 okay so which of these two intervals that contains the root so if you look at the graph so 1.5 we know that this is this is the 1 point five okay this is one point five so we have the correct is this side here this one here okay that one so if you if you look at here this is the interval that has the root okay and then divide this again 
divide this again I think we are now closer to the root okay 1.5 the answer is 1.32 or if you look at closely this is 1.31 something so this is much closer okay so we will stop uh, so if we stop at 1.5 as our root then there will be uh, the error is uh, big okay now so continue again to divide so what we will do here is we have uh, we have p is equal to 1, 1 plus 1.5 uh, over 2 okay so how much the 2.5 over 2 this is uh, 1 point I guess 1.25 where's my calculator so I'm going I'm going to to get my calculator and then this is my calculator uh, 2.5 divided by 2 so that's 1.25 okay so our new interval is uh, let's call this block here uh, 1 to 1.25 and the other one is 1.25 to 1.5 so as you can see the root is somewhere here okay based on the on the graph okay so divide this again by uh, by the by the midpoint you get the midpoint and then as you can see the interval is somewhere the, the root is somewhere here so continue to I guess how many iterations how many iterations that we have so one, two, three. So three iterations and we are now closer to the root. Okay. So that's how you are uh, going to perform this uh, bisection method. So continue. And the, the fourth is if you, div if you add 1.25 and 1.5 divided by 2. So the new midpoint is 1.375 and this is much closer to to the to the root which is 1.32 something or 1.31 okay so if you continue more the error will be less so we are now pretty close to the root visually if you look at the, the graph look at the graph we are now visually close okay so just reuse the IVT so that's how you are going to 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 apply the bisection method or bisection algorithm. So in in this example, example uh, 27, we did not uh, consider a stopping criteria. So we move on to how many uh, iteration. So we we did not employ a stopping criteria, and it's possible that. The stopping criterion is not satisfied in a reasonable amount of time. So if there is a stopping criterion, then it's possible that uh, it will not be satisfied. So we need a maximum number of iterations we are willing to run the code with. So before we go to the example, another example, uh, and the Python code for the bisection method and some theorems, let me first discuss to you the this remark 28 it says here that a numerically more stable formula to compute the midpoint is this form okay so if you recall our our topic in uh, in I guess in part one I know not part one but in chapter one okay in chapter one uh, with regards to i think somewhere in the ways something on how to uh i think i forgot i forgot the the the, the topic but uh i guess somewhere in uh, let's take a look uh let's try to open in chapter one uh where are you? Let's go to F4. 
and then let's go to chapter one uh, I think I remember it somewhere here uh, this topic regards, with regards to your problem set okay I think somewhere in uh, this one ways to avoid loss of accuracy okay this topic here and I think somewhere in your problem set you are able to apply those topics that we did before okay so anyway for if you will use uh, a minus b divided by 2 it will be okay that will be okay but I, anyway if you if you simplify this this will be this will become a minus p over 2 but I guess this formula is much more stable if uh, you have maybe 20 or more iterations so second remark there is a convenient convenient way or a uh, convenient stopping criterion for the bisection method that was mentioned before since I've mentioned that we don't employ a stopping criteria in the in example 27 so you can uh, employ this uh, stopping criteria absolute value of a minus b uh, which is less than epsilon so this is our tolerance at each step n okay so this is uh, similar to the first stopping criteria discussed earlier but not the same so one can use more than one stopping criterion an example is the python code that follows uh, the before I am going to discuss the Python code of the bisection method wherein I am going to put a stopping criterion remember that this is number one huh? this is number one in our stopping criterion I guess if I don't know if you recall let's go back to somewhere here this one here okay it's number one so either you can use number two or number three it depends upon your choice but uh, let's try this one maybe we will apply the other in your problem set okay so in example 27 we kept track on the intervals and the points obtained from the bisection by labeling as these points so this is our a sub 1 a sub 2 and we have p sub 1 p sub 2 if you recall in our in the open board as you can see here uh, this is our a sub 1 a sub 1 b sub 1 and then this is our p sub 1 okay and then we move to uh, this one here this is our a sub 2 uh, a sub 2 b sub uh, sorry a sub 2 b sub 2 my right I guess this is our p sub 2 okay our p sub 1 is p sub 1 is 0 plus 2 over 2 is equal to 1 okay where are you this one here okay I'm sorry this is the one at the top and this is our a sub 2 p sub 2 and this is our uh, a sub 3 b sub 3 and this is our p sub 3 and so on and so forth okay so if we move forward we will have this is our sorry this is our a sub 4 b sub 4 and we compute our new p sub 4 which is 1.25 plus 1.5 by the two and so on and so forth okay so let's go back to our slide okay we have these sub intervals and our midpoints so at each step n of the method we know we are working on the interval a sub n and its midpoint a sub n so this approach will be useful when you study the convergence of the method in the next theorem However, keeping track of the intervals and midpoints is not needed in the computer code. 
okay because as i've said before if we pick the this new new uh interval we will label it as uh, as uh, a b again and our p is the new p which is still p in the code because in python programming uh whatever is uh whatever the variable is used and you replace that variable uh then meaning to say uh, for example if a is equal to one and our a is replaced by two and then our a is uh, now two if we replace a by three then if you print a then our a is three and so on and so forth so instead of in the python code below we will let uh, a b be the current interval we are working and we obtain a new interval in the following step we will simply call the new interval a b again overwriting the old one so that's uh, how the python code works but uh, similarly similarly also for the midpoint p but before that let's have a the the, the algorithm Okay. This, we summarize the algorithm of uh, the bisection method and then after this we will have an example by hand and after that we will have the python code okay so let's discuss first the bisection method algorithm so as i've discussed uh, earlier in the open board is you are given a continuous function f of x and then you have to find the points say a and b such that our a is less than b and the product of the function values of a and b is less than uh, zero okay so meaning to say you have to graph the the you have to graph the uh, you have to graph the uh, uh, the, the function first and then let's for example, in my case, uh, this is the the function x to the 5 plus 2x cubed minus 5x minus 2. So I'm graphing it in the Desmos calculator. This one, graphing calculator. And uh, since I am going to locate this interval, at least this, you know, this, this root 1.32 something, 1.31 to be exact, uh, approximation uh, I'm going to get the interval 0 2 as our interval okay and then after this uh, after this where are you after this uh, after getting getting the, the two points a and B uh, where the interval resides we have to get the midpoint uh, midpoint of uh, a and b so means that t is equal to a plus b over 2 or you can use this uh, our remark remark 1 uh, which is more stable a plus b minus a over 2 okay so this uh, why 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 do we need to to use this because as you can see if uh, for example in the in the uh, what do you call this one in in python uh, we have a what do you call this one we have uh, a an irrational number and if the Py python uh, pro uh, no python uh, program or software always uh, what in truncate the the answer okay or using the round of uh, error yes you can see in the discussion before um, or using chopping then what will happen is uh, in the end you will have big error if uh, you use uh, a minus b over 2 as your midpoint but if you are going to use this one here this is uh, more uh, stable than the than a minus b over 2 okay so 
get the midpoint and then t is the root of the given function if f of t is equal to zero so if you plug in our middle our midpoint and the answer is zero plus t equal to zero then then t is a root but in this algorithm we did, we did not employ the you know, the the stopping criterion but uh, since we as you can see our our function our 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 t is irrational and we have some which is not equal to zero if you plug into the function then we have to put a stopping criterion else follow the next step divide the interval again and then if uh, the product is this and zero then there is a root in uh, t and a else there is a root in this one here that's just like what i've said before in the discussion just like this one here okay this one here okay we divide then the other has a root the other is do not have the root for this one here this one has the root the other do not have the root so that's what we mean by by uh, by this part here okay then repeat above the three steps first second third and so on until we have uh, f of t is equal to zero so that's the bisection method algorithm Okay, so let's have now an example and and I will put that one in the open board. Okay, let's go to the open board and as you can see here, let's have a new page. So let's have this example, uh, another example, another example. Let's have uh, this is by hand. Okay, determine the root before we go to the program Python code. X squared minus three is equal to zero for x in the interval one two. Okay. So solution, uh, as you can see, we will write this one first as function. We will write this one as f of x is equal to x squared minus 3 is equal to 0. Okay? For f of x, not that one, is equal to x squared minus 3. So clearly, uh, if you will try to solve it by hand so we have x squared is equal to 3 or x is equal to plus and minus square root of 3 okay and we know that uh, for positive square root of 3 the answer is irrational square root of 3 is 1.73 so I'm using my calculator 7320 so basically uh, square root of 3 is in the interval 1 2 not the negative not the negative root okay not the negative root here this one here okay so this is what we are what we are trying to to, to determine to find that truth okay this is 1.73 okay so but before that let's graph let's graph the 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 function let's uh, go back that one later so this is x uh, x squared minus 3 okay so enter uh, enter uh, you can see here this is the, the root let's change the color to uh, sorry the color to let's say orange and let's make it bigger like five something 
done okay that one this is the the root okay so uh, let's go now to the to open board and let's uh, try to use my pen solve this one let's use the color so notice that our given is uh, x squared minus 3 is equal to 0 and we will we will uh, let our function f of x is equal to x squared minus 3 okay so now uh, we are going to find the value of uh, f of x at uh, a is equal to 1 and b is equal to 2 based on the algorithm uh, sorry this one here where where's the algorithm this one first okay this first one so in compute uh, we know that uh, 1 is less than 2 let's compute f of a and f of b okay so let's compute uh, f of a and f of b then uh, f of a which is our f of 1 or is 1 we have 1 square minus 3 and we know that this is 1 minus 3 which is negative 2 okay our f of b and f of b which is f of 2 we have 2 square minus 3 so this is 4 minus 3 which is equal to 1 and this is less than 0 and this is greater than 1 okay so uh, f of a times f of b is less than zero okay so we are pretty sure that the ibt is satisfied so let's continue the given function which is f of x is uh, continuous and uh, we will not discuss the continuity of the, the quadratic function since you already know that in your uh, high school math particularly in k12 in uh, 11 k11 okay root uh, algebra and trigonometry or in your calculus also basic calculus and your pre-calculus lies in the interval uh, 1 2 okay so now we move to uh, sorry we move to the second find the midpoint of a and b since our first is already satisfied Okay, uh, then, okay, so now further, further, uh, let T be the midpoint. Of the interval. The interval that we mean is uh, 
is the 1 to interval so our t is 1 plus 2 over 2 we use uh, the formula a plus b over 2 this is 3 over 2 or this is 1.5 1. 1. okay or maybe if uh, you will use uh, t is equal to or let's say p uh, not, we will not use t here let's use uh, p okay let's use p and let's use p here also this one use p is equal to a based on the mark i guess 28 over 2 so if you use if, if you will use this one we have i guess the same we have 1 plus uh, 2 minus 1 over 2 and it will be the same as 1.5 okay but in python uh, program it will be much different since so we we have a truncation error or the chopping error and the other one rounding error that one okay So, therefore, our P, uh, our, our P evaluated in the function is uh, equal to 1.5 square minus 3. Okay, x squared minus 3. This is equivalent to negative 0 0.75. Okay. And this is uh, less than 0. Okay. So, based on our discussion, if you look at in the... Uh, and we are now in this one here okay this one fourth divide interval if this one f of t times f of a is less than zero there exists a root else we have this one okay so based on our discussion based on this argument we have if uh, f of f of p is less than zero assume a is equal to p and uh, if f of p f of p is greater than zero uh, assume uh, b is equal to p okay so in our case since uh, it satisfies in the first condition this one here we assume that a is equal to p okay so we have negative here so since uh, f of p is uh, negative negative so a is replaced by by 
P by P by P is equal to 1.5 for the next iteration okay so some point there so we move on to this table okay so let's uh, continue the process continue the process until we have enough iteration to locate our root which is 1.73 this one here 73 okay this one so this is the table so you continue i'm going to to what they call this one to add uh this one here i'm going to add image image somewhere where are you i think this one this is the new image okay so this is the table so for iteration one we have this value so make this table by um, continuing this method that we have. Okay, this method. Continue the method until we have a closer approximation to this to this root. Okay, so that's. Uh, how you are going to apply the bisection method so you can increase more so if you want to put a in the python code i'm going to put a stopping criteria okay in the mark 28 something you mark you mark 28 where are you we mark 28 uh, yeah, I'm gonna mark this one here. Okay. So anyway, uh, this is how you are going to use the or to generate the bisection method algorithm. So in your uh, assignment or in your problem set, so you can uh, generate so by hand using uh, what I've done in example in another example in the open board in our uh, whiteboard okay so this is how to use the bisection method okay we don't we don't employ the uh, the what you call this one the stopping criteria okay but in our Python code I'm going to put a, a, a stopping criterion uh, in a while so for now you can you can open your I, python ide or you can open your anaconda or jupyter notebook or spider uh, in, in anaconda you have by uh, jupyter notebook or python spider then you can uh, get the you know the we can encode the what they call this one uh, the code for the bisection method algorithm before we are going to discuss this theorem two theorems and and then we have this to find the tolerance and also uh, example before we are going to go to the problem set okay so let's open now your uh, your Python IDLD or Anaconda. Okay. For the Python code of uh, bisection method algorithm, 
let's open our um, IDE so as you can see here uh, sorry let's open our IDE and uh, let's open a new file Okay, a new file as you can see here we have to write first is let's uh, import uh, our package numpy import numpy as uh, np okay. and then please don't forget that we have to what they call this one we have to incorporate the stopping criterion but first let's define our function let's define a bisection since we are uh, dealing with bisection method so let's define our function f we need four uh, variables our function our endpoint i know we, need, we have five our uh, what they call this one tolerance which is epsilon and the number of uh, iterations okay next is um, First, we begin our, our our iteration n is equal to one, and then we also uh, ensure our value of p carries out of the while loop. So p is equal to let's say zero first, and then let's have this while uh, loop while uh, n is less than or uh, less than or equal to big N okay. so we have this midpoint P is equal to we, we, we will use remark uh, 28 letter A uh, B minus A it's remark 28 I don't know if you recall it uh, sorry this one uh, remark 28 where are you that letter A number 1 the mark 28 number 1 this one and then uh, let's define the step uh, stopping criterion np uh, sir you can search this uh, function is close uh, we have f of p comma zero or we have two or more uh, we can put the two or more uh, stopping criterion this is uh, this one here in the uh, that absolute value a minus b less than our tolerance okay and then if this is satisfied we print we print this one here uh, print p is comma p uh, and the iteration 
is um, <coughs> n. Okay. The n that we have here, this one here. Uh, basically is doing is that if this is satisfied so when you know in your uh, what subject is this uh, this is or okay if this are uh, true false we have true 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 is true false true is uh, true uh, we have false false is false okay so I think in your uh, MMW subject or in your uh, set theory subject so this is a familiar uh, very familiar uh, operation and after this we move to uh, what do you call this one we move to We move to number this one here. Divide interval a b. If this will be satisfied, it's two here. Okay. So let's uh, open our Python. So if uh, f of a times uh, f of p is uh, less than zero so what we will do is we print uh, b is equal to p and else what we will do is we need this one a is equal to p okay so this is basically uh, what it did in uh, I don't know if you remember in our open board let's go to where are you this one here okay we if is less than 0, assume this equal to P. Uh, if it is greater than 0, assume this equal to P. Okay. So, this is the same thing as uh, this, uh, this one here. Okay. And then we will iterate. This function here n is equal to n plus one is says that if n is equal to one and it, if it will continue, then it will move to n is equal to two. And if n is equal to two, and then it will go to this code here, and then after that it will uh, move again to n is equal to three. This is what basically means by n plus equals one okay and then after this we have to evaluate y is equal to f of t and we print this, uh, this one here uh, method uh, did not did not converts uh, the last iteration iteration gives uh, e the function value the function value 
1. Okay, this is the y that we have. We have here. Okay, that's the function value. Let's make it bigger. And then after this, we have to print uh, this one here, for example, <coughs> copy. Let's um, define our function lambda, lambda. We, we already know how to use the lambda function, lambda x. Let's say x squared minus 3. Okay, the one that we have in the another example in the open board. And let's try 1, 2. And our tolerance is let's say 1e e, uh, minus 4. So, and we have iteration, we have 20. And let's have this system here. First is let's uh, run this code. I hope there will be no error. So let's, uh, for running uh, this one, let's save it first. Let's say by sec one, save. So P is uh, 1.73. One where's why well, is it that there is a none here? P is uh, sorry. P is okay. There's a prop. P is P and uh, the iteration is the made a mistake and the iteration is n return okay so let's run again why is it that there is a none import num psnp okay there should be no or shall I erase that one first okay that one okay so our answer as you can see in the open board uh, sorry open board is 1.732 1.732 Zero five zero eight. Okay, so let me see my calculator. Square root of three is at one. And if we go back to our code one point seven three two, I think I made mistake. Seven three two zero two five one. After fifteen iteration, but if you look at in our in the open board so where are you this one here uh, we have after seven iteration we approximate that our solution is 1.73266 this one okay uh, why why is it that uh, is much uh, uh, not closer to the solution that we have in in our Python program. This is because we we we, we have a round of uh, error somewhere in this uh, area here. This one here. Okay. This one. So and since we we do we do uh, a round of uh, the, 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 the Python uh, or the your calculator says that uh, uh, 
uh, says that uh, no, not the, not the calculator, but you wrote it in a uh, what they call this one in four decimal places only. Uh, so this is the reason why uh, why there's a big difference, and also we stop at. Uh, n is equal to 7 okay so but if you look at in our uh, in our code uh, we have here 15 iterations okay 15 iterations so what happens in the in this uh, in this uh, code that we have here so when when n is equal to one, the first iteration. So we have it will go to this one in this this portion here. Okay, so it will calculate like one one minus uh, one minus two absolute value is positive one, and we know that it is not less than APS, which is one e. One e uh, one e to the four is if you write it here, and the answer is zero point zero zero one. Okay, so one e to the negative four, one times ten to the negative four is this one here. Okay, so we know that one is not less than this one. Here. So this is false. And f of 0 is negative 3. And we know that negative 3. So if we, if we will write here, let's say import, uh, import numpy, numpy as np. And then let's say np that is close. Uh, let's say n of uh, rp is 0 here so we have 0 uh, f of 0 we have negative 3 so negative 3 comma 0 so the answer is false so this is false and this is also false so let, let's try it uh, if you don't believe me let's say 1 minus 2 1 minus 2 uh, less than uh, 0 0.0001 okay so false so false false so if false or false we have false okay so since this is false it will uh, move to the next uh, command so it will plug in f of 1 so times f of uh, what do you call this one? Uh, Rp here is uh, 1.5. 1 Am I right? 1 plus 2 divided by uh, 1 plus uh, 2 minus 1, the part 2 is 1 half, so 1 plus 1 half is 0.5, so 1.5. So 1.5 positive and f of a one is negative so, so f of one is negative so this is satisfied so our p is equal to our b is equal to p so this is which is 1.5 and we will not go to this else statement here and after that it will go to the while loop and is equal to two second iteration and then our a is the same which is one but our b is the new p that we computed so this is 1.5 so plug in again this is false false so it will not satisfy and then it will move here this statement and it will uh, go again after and uh, 20, 20 iteration okay so notice that at n is equal to 15, we have the, the root 1.73. So if we decrease the iteration, let's say 10. 
okay and then we run this program it will print this uh, code here print statement method did not converge for example this one so since uh it based on our previous uh, uh previous n which is big n which is 15 uh, which is 20 and the iteration is uh 15 with with uh this one uh tolerance uh, eps which is one uh one times 10 to the negative four the iteration is 15 and if we we have the same here the same values but replace our big n by 10 and we know that the iteration is 15 to get the the root uh, it will print this last statement okay since uh based on the previous uh, command uh, previous n big n our iteration is 15 and we have here 10 so it will print this value 1.731 with function value uh, substitute p 1.731445312 to y is equal to f of p so this is basically what happens if uh, if uh, the tolerance or the stopping criterion is one point uh, one times ten to the negative four, so if we replace by two, one times ten to the two, what is one e to the two to the negative two is point zero one. So if we run this code, okay, so we have eight iterations. So meaning to say uh, if our tolerance is 0 0.01 okay and we have n 10 iterations then uh, we will have the root 1.7304 which is of course not close to to this one here this uh, root which is the correct one after 15 iteration so this is uh, uh, what happened when we have a uh, round of error or the chopping error or the truncation error okay so because we cut uh, those values somewhere in the, in the code okay so if we decrease this to five to five then what happened is we evaluate this last print statement since we have eight iterations to get the root this one here and uh, since after five iteration we only have five iteration so this is the, the last iteration gives this value okay so this is the uh, what you call this one this is the uh, python code for the by section uh, method okay so for the next uh, slide before we prove theorem 29 and theorem 30 uh, corollary 30 uh, let me uh, explain to you first the problem set okay for this uh, lecture so find the root of f of x so i guess this is problem set two okay, problem set two in chapter two we have already problem set number one find the root of the cubic equation uh, of cubic function f of x is equal to x cubed plus 4x squared minus 10 using the bisection method not the bisection method that we discussed uh, earlier but with this modification modify the python code for the bisection method so that only the stopping criterion f of p is equal to zero so all you have to do is to remove the other criterion and also you have to print the uh, print the statement uh, to the code so that every time a new p is computed just like in the in the uh, Fibonacci uh, 
code or Python code for the Fibonacci sequence, you print uh, all those. Uh, I don't know if if you forgot. Let's uh, recall that one. Uh, let's say let me open my. I don't know if I uh, write it somewhere here. Like I don't know if this is the right one. Mm -hmm. This one. Let's run this code first. Okay, I don't know what happened. Here, uh, yeah, this one here. Fibonacci sequence. So that that's not the right one. Maybe I have to open this. I think this one. Uh, no, not this one also. I don't know if I save it. Uh, let's say this one here. Yeah, I think this is the the one that we did. Let's say we have 15. Okay, so we print, this is uh, what we what we need in, in the problem set. You have to print all those numbers uh, okay. So that every time a new P is computed, Python prints the value of P and the iteration. So iteration number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and also the P. Okay. The first column is uh, the iteration number and the, the P value is the midpoint. Okay. The second column. So this is uh, the modification of the bisection method that I uh, already typed a while ago. And next is find the number of iteration n necessary to obtain an accuracy of 10 to the negative 4 for the root using the theoretical results of section 0.2 which is where we will be discuss uh, next okay this one here so this is uh, for letter b and for letter c run the code using the value of n obtained in part b this one here uh, to compute p1 and of course, you have to screenshot your result, screenshot the Python code, and paste it in the uh, how to call that in the paste it in the uh, Word document before saving it as a PDF file. And then letter D is uh, the actual root, correct to six decimal place. We have one point three six this one. Find the absolute error when p sub n is used to approximate the actual root so the n here is the n that we obtain in uh, letter b that is fine this one here compare this error with the upper bound for the error used in part b this one upper bound this one here 10 to the negative 4 i think okay that's one so that's for the problem set number two so next we move to Theorem uh, 29. Okay, Theorem 29. So let's prove this and let's see the result in the in the open book. Okay. Okay, for the proof of uh, Theorem 29, let's uh, open our. Uh, open board first so this is the proof proof uh, let's use the black color the okay, proof of uh, theorem 29 so based on our discussion uh, we 
we let uh, the sequences a sub n and uh, b sub n so these are the sequence that you will get if you divide the interval into two so we will denote the uh, left hand uh, left hand and uh, right and uh, points of the sub intervals 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 uh, generated by the bisection method okay. by section method so just like in the previous example so since uh, at each step uh, the interval the interval is half okay, divided into two so we have this uh, form okay b sub n minus a sub n is equal to one half a sub n minus one minus b sub n minus one okay this is uh, very clear in the what you call this one in the algorithm okay so for example if you have uh, n is uh, equal to 2 so in the previous example as you can see uh, as you can see in the previous example where are you this one here okay uh step 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 one okay so we divide the interval uh zero two uh into two sub intervals and we know that a and b is uh a1 b sub one and then after that divide this one again by 2 and then you have a sub 2 b sub 2 and so on and so forth okay so the corresponding midpoint for a sub 1 b sub 1 is uh, b sub 1 for a sub 2 b sub 2 we have b sub 2 and so on and so forth okay so this is uh, very clear from our illustration okay so where are you okay let's go back to the open board and then uh, we will use this one to uh, generate all the the halving okay so by PMI or the principle of mathematical induction so we get this form okay b sub n minus a sub n is equal to one half uh, a sub n minus one minus uh, a sub uh, sorry this is b sub b sub n minus one minus a sub n minus one okay and then as you have noticed okay this is uh, one half of 
use this color one half uh, b sub n minus 2 minus a sub n minus minus 2 okay that one okay so why is that uh, notice I don't know if uh, if you notice let's have this scratch somewhere here scratch paper okay scratch paper so scratch uh, when n is equal to 2 we have uh, sorry sorry we have replace uh, replace replace uh, n by n minus 1 n minus 1 so this one here this one here this uh, this uh, equation okay remember this equation we will use this one we will have uh, replace n by n minus 1 so we have b sub n minus 1 minus a sub n minus 1 is equal to 1 half a sub n minus 2 minus b uh, sorry this is 1 half b sub uh, this should be it should be 1 half uh, b sub n minus 1 should be b sub n minus 2 minus a sub n minus 2 so i made a mistake here this should be so sorry this should be uh, this should be b sub n minus 1 minus a sub n minus 1 okay because a is uh, uh, b is greater than a okay right minus left okay so again if you replace uh, let's have another color this one here black replace uh, n by uh, n minus 2 so we have b sub n minus 2 minus a sub n minus 2 is equal to 1 half b sub n minus 3 minus a sub n minus 3 okay and so on and so forth okay replace n by n minus 3 n minus 4 and so on and so forth up to uh, 3 to uh, 3 to okay because 3 is the last one because uh, we have here 3 uh, 2 is the last one the last number 2 minus 1 is 1 okay so so it will end up uh, it will end to b sub 1 minus a sub 1 okay so we will use that one so substitute and then simplify so we have 1 2 square b sub n minus 2 a sub n minus 2 so from here we have substitute so in the scratch and then one half two square b sub this one b sub n minus two minus a sub n minus two is this one here okay this one okay one half b sub n minus three minus a sub n minus three okay so this is substitute again one half uh, b sub n minus 3 minus a sub n minus 3 
So simplify 1 over 2 cube and then b sub n minus 3 a sub n minus 3. If you continue, you will arrive at so this is uh, PMI, principle of mathematical induction. You have 2 to the n minus 1, 1 over 2 to the n minus 1, up to b sub 1 minus a sub 1. Okay, that, that will be the ending. If you don't believe it, then uh, just try to plug in some values like n is equal to 5 and then try to substitute if this uh, formula is correct okay and then so what happens here is uh, we have therefore uh, what we will get is we have uh, b sub n minus a sub n is equal to 1 over 2 to the n minus 1 times uh, uh, b1 uh, b minus a okay b minus a why is that because i don't know if you know to notice the interval we in our discussion before if this is the interval a B this is the interval A B this is the X uh, Y axis the X axis and we divide this one into two so our P is our P P1 is A plus B over 2 right and we know that uh, in our previous discussion A B is equal to A1 b sub 1 okay uh, i don't know if you recall based on our discussion we have where are you this one here we let or are you step one this one here a comma b is equal to a sub 1 b sub 1 okay so Let's go back again to our open board. So B1 replace uh, B1 by B and A1 by A. Okay, this one. Okay. And observe that. So, sorry. Observe, sorry, this one here. B sub 1. Observe that uh, absolute value of P sub n minus P is uh, less than or equal to one half of B sub n minus A sub n. Okay? This is uh, true for all n greater than equal to 1 okay n is greater than or equal to 1 so why is that uh, based on the and on our discussion if you take the, the hubs okay so for example if you have here so this is the, the midpoint okay p or p sub n this is our midpoint maybe let's uh, generalize it and what if, if this is your function that one this is your root this is your p okay the approximated p value if uh, if p sub n minus p okay p sub n minus p is always less than or equal to one half of uh, b minus a okay so a sub one b sub one and so on and so forth 
okay so if even if uh, this is true for all n okay this is true for all n so that's why we have this inequality and this is very obvious uh, observation okay that's a very obvious observation and uh, we know that we know that this one here b sub n minus a sub n is one half of uh, one over two to the n minus one times b minus a so we have to to substitute so we have here this is equal to let's use block one half let's substitute uh, this is 1 over 2 to the n minus 1 times b minus a okay and if you simplify this is equal to 1 over 2 to the n times b minus a okay so and then uh and uh, we know that as n does as n approaches to positive infinity this uh, what do you call this one expression absolute value of b sub n minus p as n approaches to infinity we have this one here approaches to zero Okay, so this is uh, approaches to zero as n approaches to positive infinity. So this is the proof of theorem 29. Okay, so that's theorem 29. Okay, the bisection method generates a sequence p sub n approximating a zero p of f of x with this uh, output which is as you can see uh, as you can see here okay this one absolute value of p sub n minus p is less than or equal to 1 over 2 to the n times p minus a Okay, so that's uh, the proof for for uh, theorem twenty nine. So let's proceed to the proof of corollary thirty. Okay, again, let's uh, open our open board. Okay, so this is the proof. Okay, uh, let's use this color here proof of uh, corollary 30 so the bisection method so this is the proof uh, does not satisfy uh, I don't know if you recall this uh, 2.1 equation 2.1 in the in our previous video for uh, a and c less than or equal to one and we know already that the bisection method is uh, of linear convergence but uh, it satisfies uh, a variant of uh, 2.2 okay we let's go back to that uh, to example to win to later with c uh, is equal to one half from the previous theorem okay the previous theorem that i am referring is theorem 29 
So, this one here, example to, uh, equation 2.1 example and equation 2.2, if you remember, this is uh, somewhere in this one here, special case, definition 24. So, it will not satisfy the bisection method. Uh, it will not satisfy equation 2.1, this one here. Okay? But it will satisfy equation 2.2 somewhere here. Okay? So, and as you can see, it's, it says here there are some methods for which equation 2.2 holds, this one here. But equation 2.1 does not hold for any C. So, and we still call these uh, methods to be of linear or to be of linear convergence. An example of this is the bisection method, which is this uh, statement here refers to corollary parity. Okay. So, if uh, you recall that one, so you will notice that this one is true. But uh, if you don't believe me again, uh, let's have some thoughts here. Let's have some thoughts, okay? Some thoughts. Okay, uh, let's verify this one here. Uh, no, not, not 2.1, but 2.2. So, in exam, in equation, equation 2.2, it says that absolute value of P sub N plus 1 minus P is less than or equal to c to the n times the quantity uh, I don't know if you recall uh, where are you okay uh, mm -hmm. this one here p sub 1 minus p okay so this is uh, P sub 1 minus P. Okay? So that's in example 2.2. It says here that uh, the bisection method satisfies the variant of 2.2, this one here, with C is equal to 1 half from the previous theorem. So if we refer to our previous theorem, we know that absolute value of p sub n minus p is less than or equal to 1 half 1 over 2 to the n minus uh, times b minus a okay this one here so we will use this uh, result so we, we will refer to to this one here as let's say sharp okay let's refer to that one as sharp so from sharp uh, from sharp we have absolute value of p sub n minus p less than or equal to 1 over 2 to the n times b minus a am i right okay this one here okay and since this is true for all n so this is for all n greater than or equal to 1, okay? So this implies that uh, this is true also for n is equal to n. Uh, if we replace n by n plus 1, this one here, okay? So by induction, so we have this is, we will use uh, from... Uh, from 2.2, we have uh, absolute value of P sub N plus 1 minus P is less than or equal to C to the N plus 1 absolute value of P1 minus P. Okay. So, that is the case. Okay. So, this means that uh, does uh, uh, let's 
write it somewhere here thus from sharp we have absolute value versus sharp here this one here okay so replace n by n plus 1 so p sub n plus 1 minus p which is less than equal to 1 to to the n plus 1 b minus a okay so these two here okay so this result here this one can be written as p sub n plus 1 minus p is less than or equal to one half to the that one okay one half to the n plus one okay b minus a okay so how we will uh, get c is equal to one half here we have is uh, how do we replace p minus uh, b minus a this one here b minus a by p1 minus p okay so let's uh, write it here by absolute value of p sub n minus a uh, plus 1 minus p is less than or equal to 1 half to the n times b minus a over 2 okay so all you have to do is to separate separate one half here okay there are n plus one one half so take out uh, the only one one half and then put it in the denominator and this uh, this one here this one here is I don't know if you believe me but this is p1 minus uh, p okay that one okay why why is that do you believe me okay so can you see it uh, in here if n is equal to 1 we have if n is equal to 1 so we have p1 minus p is less than or equal to 1 half b minus a okay so we replace by uh, we know that our p1 minus p is less than or equal to 1 half b minus a that one here so this means that uh, this means that our c is equal to one half okay so that's the computation behind uh, the proof of corollary 30 okay so that's it and we will proceed to i think we are now in uh, we are done with corollary 30 so the proof is in the open board so we will proceed to discuss this uh, slide here and this slide will uh, tell us on how to get the uh, number of iterations okay this slide here okay this is an example for this question so okay so that's it for uh, for uh, theory of corollary 30 uh, how, this is the last one find the number of iterations uh, iterations um, find the number of iterations to obtain a specified Accuracy. 
okay so this is how you are going to get the tolerance okay so can we find ends that the big n that we use in the python code that will ensure the, the absolute value of p sub n minus p is less than or equal to 10 to negative n for some l so from the proof we know that this one therefore we can make uh, uh, we can make this inequality by choosing n large enough so that the upper bound one half 1 over 2 to the n times p minus a is less than 10 to negative l okay so by substituting and then get the logarithm the solve for n we have this formula okay so this is the formula that we, we need so for example determine the iterations to solve uh, f of x this one here with accuracy uh, 10 to the negative 4 or 1 time 1 e to the minus 4 in python code a is equal to 0 and b is equal to 2 so if you substitute it here you will get uh, let's try it okay let's try it 5x 10 to negative 4 to solve in our open board let's have our open board and we have let's have this one solution solution for example 31 solution of example 31 okay since uh, n is greater than or equal based on the formula uh, log of log of base 2 we have based on the formula we have 2 over 10 to the negative 4 okay and this is equal to 4 times log uh, simplifying log of 10 base 2 plus 1 which is equal to 14.3 okay so the number of required iteration number of required iteration is uh, 15 okay so that's how you are going to use uh, the formula okay so if you don't believe me so you can simplify I don't know if you get it uh, one half uh, one to the one, one over two to the n b minus a is not equal to 10 to the negative l so you can take the log or ln both sides if you want if you want it. So we have um, what happened if we are going to take the log both sides ten to the negative n log of b minus a over 2 to the n okay so is this greater than or less than okay so this greater than or less than so as you can see uh, this is less than okay uh, less than uh, we will not simplify the right hand side because we need 10 to the negative n okay so in here we write the left hand side as 
log of b minus a minus log of 2 to the n less than log of 10 to the negative n and then we move the the, the, the because we need n we move this to the left hand side and this one here move to the right hand side so this is minus log of 10 to the negative and less than or equal to log of 2 to the n so we have n log of 2 and this will become log of uh, b minus a over 10 to the negative n Okay. So we are almost done. This is uh, less than we divide both sides by log two. So log of b minus a over ten to the negative l divided by log two. So by the property of the logarithm, so we have less than or equal to n. We have log of uh, b minus a over 10 to the negative l uh, base 2 this is the formula okay this is the formula that we have okay so i know that you are now convinced with this formula so we have we need 15 iterations that's how you will get the iterations in the ensure that the if the what they call this one the code in the Python code in the Python program to ensure that the iteration is correct. Okay, this is how you will get the number of iterations so that it will not print the last, uh, the, the, the what they call this one, the last uh, print option in the bisection method uh, code. Okay, Python code. So that's it for today. The next, uh, the next uh, method that the iterative method that we will discuss is the Newton's method, uh, Newton Raphson method. Okay. So thank you so much for listening, and God bless everyone.